Dingai Fusion Records. Chapter 41 Zhang Drum Xiao Shan immediately hid behind Chen Xing. Xiang Shu looked at him and then asked, What are you going to do with this kid? Chen Xing was also slightly troubled. Take him with us to find the whereabouts of the Dingai Pearl Ma? Shi Hai targeted him, if they brought Xiao Shan with them, he feared it would only put him in danger. But L Yu Ying had entrusted Xiao Shan to himself, so how could he be left behind? What do you think? Chen Xing asked Xiang Shu. Xiang Shu, he should go back to wherever he came from. He is the descendant of Hohanyi Chanyu, the most suitable place for him is to be with his clan. According to L Yu Ying, the Hohanyi clan had all perished in Longcheng, but the Xian News were still there. However, could they take care of Xiao Shan? Chen Xing was skeptical. Furthermore, he really didn't know whether Xiao Shan wanted to stay in Longcheng or not. Xiao Shan seemed to sense that the two were discussing finding a place for him to settle in. He showed a slightly worried expression, which made Chen Xing stop talking altogether. Chen Xing somewhat cleaned Xiao Shan and washed off the dirt on him during their bath. He was surprised to discover that the boy wasn't as dark-skinned as he had thought, but was instead pale and looked very neat. He borrowed children's clothes from the Xian News for him to put on. Although Xiao Shan and Xiang Shu didn't look alike at all, their bearings made them look like a father-son pair. One big and one small, and not only did their faces both look grumpy and antisocial, they also looked majestic. At one glance, it was clear that they weren't to be messed with. Where does the music come from? Chen Xing took Xiao Shan's hand as they stood in one of Karakoram's streets. He heard the sound of a flute coming from a distance and quickly walked over, watching the blood-colored sunset in the process. After bathing, Xiang Shu stood at the top of the city gate tower. Facing the direction of Qi Li Chuan and holding a Qiang flute in his hands, he lowered his eyebrows and closed his eyes as he played an ancient song of the people beyond the Great Wall. Many of Qi Li Chuan's Hu people, as well as local Longchenj's people, came out of their houses, went to the city walls, and knelt in the street. Chen Xing slowly walked up towards the city gate tower. For a period of time, he was truly fascinated by the fact that Xiang Shu could play the Qiang flute. In the world covered with snow, Chen Xing saw Xiang Shu in his Hu hunting robe, his clothes swaying and fluttering exactly like a dragon's whiskers. The Qiang flute in his hand sounded out a deep and sonorous tone, and under the gloomy sky, the wind surged and the clouds billowed, the atmosphere was filled with the type of feelings that could stir one's soul. The sound of the Qiang flute was clear and firm. One time, it appeared as though there were two strong armies fighting in an intense battle. Another time, it sounded just as if the sea was raging and the waves were surging, pouring water everywhere. Then, the tone shifted, and it became the sound of a group of wild geese flying far away. It suddenly rose and became a scene of ten thousand horses galloping outside the Great Wall before gradually calming down, sounding as gentle and as soft as the snowflakes which covered the entire world. Finally, in the gentlest tune, it became a ballad for the souls, directing all the souls of those who sacrificed themselves in Qi Li Chuan to at last return to Mother Earth. What song is this? Chen Xing murmured. After the song was over, Xiang Shu opened his eyes and glanced at Chen Xing. Fusion Melody, Xiang Shu said. Chen Xing recalled the tune of the song. It had suddenly risen before suddenly calmed down, indeed similar to the unstable life in the vast ocean, one moment floating, another moment sinking. He was about to ask who taught him to play the Qiang flute when Xiao Shan, full of curiosity, suddenly moved his hand closer and snatched Xiang Shu's Qiang flute out his hands before running away. Give it back. Xiang Shu immediately chased him. Xiao Shan tried to blow the flute while making a wivua sound as he ran away. Chen Xing Xiao Shan was so energetic. It had taken Chen Xing a full two days to correct Xiao Shan's habit of walking on all fours. Even though Xiao Shan had reluctantly changed it sometimes, when Chen Xing was away, he still returned to his old habits. 
Chen Xing had to temporarily confiscate his claws so that his hands were shorter than his feet, making Xiao Shan feel uncomfortable if he tried crawling again. Fortunately, Xiao Shan was devoted in carrying out Liu Ying's last order and basically behaved very well. Xiang Shu, Xiang Shu, Chen Xing began to teach Xiao Shan to speak Han again. He started with people's names before moving to heaven and earth, river and plains, sun and moon, and also the stars. Unexpectedly, Xiao Shan learned very quickly. It was just, he didn't know what language Liu Ying had used to talk to Xiao Shan before. Chen Xin was also surprised by the fact that Liu Ying's spoken Han was very pure because he originally thought that these great Yao's were mostly associated with the Xi'an news in the north. Perhaps in order not to let Xiao Shan forget that he had a Han father, Liu Ying would occasionally speak in Han to the child. Xiao Shan learned some words and would string some words together on his own, saying a lot of confusing words that only Chen Xin could understand. Chen Xin took Xiao Shan with him. He thought that Xiao Shan was actually more fun to play with, moreover, he didn't want to go to Xiang Shu just to be rebuffed. He could only live up to 20 years old. In this life, there was probably no hope for him to settle down, start a family, and have children. Raising Xiao Shan felt just like raising a son, he would just treat it as if experiencing the joy of having children in advance. That day, Xiang Shu had asked Chen Xing about finding a place for Xiao Shan. Chen Xing was conflicted, on one hand, he wanted Xiao Shan to be by his side, but on the other hand, he also worried that he was unable to take care of him in the long term. What would happen to the child then? Give him to Xiang Shu? Looking from his appearance, Xiang Shu was also unreliable. In the end, it was still necessary to let Xiao Shan go back to his clan as soon as possible. Although Xiao Shan was already 12 years old, his height was about the same as some much younger children. Since he had been living with the wolves for a long time, his wisdom was far worse than that of his peers. He changed into a Xiang Nu fur hunting suit. Chen Xing specially dressed him, he took both sides of his hair and pushed it up and also combed the hair on the top of his forehead and arranged it just like Xiang Shu. At this moment, even though his identity wasn't clear to Qi Li Chuan's people, nobody asked about it. They only regarded Xiao Shan as the little prince of the teals. Chen Xing wanted to change Xiao Shan's attire into a Han costume, but he couldn't find one anywhere. Xiao Shan was still very young, and his facial features were very upright, his face outline was deep, he had a high nose bridge and bright amber eyes, and between his eyebrows and eyes, there was a trace of arrogance, betraying his half Xiang Nu's lineage. You are Zia Jun's descendant. Chen Xing said, your ancestor was a famous beauty. You should always be at least a little aware of this fact, so don't rub around against the wall like a dog. Xiao Shan Chen Xing and Xiao Shan were sitting beside the city walls, warming themselves up with the fire. Xiao Shan's back was itching, so he leaned on the brick wall and started rubbing against it. Chen Xing gave him a back scratcher and Xiao Shan enjoyed scratching himself with it. Xiao Shan seemed to have had a good time since he started following Chen Xing. Most of the time, he was full of curiosity, moving around and peering at everything. But in the dead of night, Xiao Shan would occasionally think of Liu Ying and became a little depressed. Chen Xing would touch his small arm to give out some comfort, everyone must experience this kind of thing, everything will slowly get better. Chen Xing gave the amber containing the ashes of the phoenix to Xiao Shan as a token to remember Liu Ying by. Xiao Shan wore it around his neck and put it underneath his clothes. How can you get so dirty every day? Chen Xing really didn't understand how Xiao Shan could get dirty despite following him almost all the time. Wearing new clothes, they would be covered with dust in less than half a day. Ever since he was a child, he was used to properly sitting and studying at home, and when sometimes he went out, he would be waited upon by Yuan Xian. He never went wild like Xiao Shan. When Xiao Shan saw a tree he wanted to climb it. When he saw cattle or sheep, he also wanted to touch them. Xiao Shan, how? 
Xiao Shan was just subconsciously repeating his words, but that remark was like a provocation. Chen Xing sometimes looked at him and felt that he liked him more and more. If he had this kind of younger brother at home, surely he would have loved him dearly, to the point where he would nearly want to tie him with a rope and stop him from running around everywhere. Keep an eye on your ember. Chen Xing said, if all goes well, when the mana returns in the future, maybe you can bring El Yu Ying back to life. Xiao Shan generally understood his meaning and nodded his head. Chen Xing also didn't know how the phoenix would revive from the dead. According to ancient records, the power released during the phoenix nirvana could reshape one's body, but it was also limited to the physical body. El Yu Ying was dead, if he had already belonged to heaven and had entered the reincarnation cycle, Chen Xing didn't know whether it would still be useful or not. Finished scratching his back, Xiao Shan's ears suddenly perked up, and he turned to look outside of the city. Coming. Xiao Shan said, coming. Chen Xing was sitting in front of the fire, trying to keep his hands warm. Hearing Xiao Shan's words, he raised his head and nervously stood up, looking outside of the city. Xiao Shan held the back scratcher and stood in front of Chen Xing, showing the might that was enough to hold out against 10,000 people. Chen Xing looked for a long time, but as far as he could see, there was nothing outside the city. Coming, coming. Xiao Shan pushed Chen Xing, trying to make him go to a safe place. He opened up his outer robe and tied it on his waist. He intended to go to the city walls to fight, saying, Chen Xing, go. Chen Xing, go. And then, Chen Xing saw it. At the far end of the plain, there was a black tide watermark, and some thousands of living corpse cavalry slowly closing in. The scouts saw it too, and the sound of the horn immediately resounded all over Longcheng. It came faster than expected, but Xiang Shu had arranged all of the city defenses within a short period of two days since arriving in Longcheng. As things stand, as long there was no snowstorm, Karakoram's solid city defense would be able to withstand this living corpse army for two or three days. Xiao Shan wanted to jump directly from the city tower and go to war, but he was grabbed by Chen Xing. Not now. Chen Xing said, wait for Xiang Shu to come. Chen Xing activated the heart lamp several times. Xiang Shu had already led the tile cavalry to a high position, he rode the horse up to the city gate tower and looked into the distance. Chen Xing said, we have to find a way to catch the commander-in-chief and try to keep him alive this time. I want to bring Sima Yu back and clarify something. Requesting that, Chen Xing looked at Xiang Shu. After fighting so many times, Xiang Shu had left an almost invincible impression in his heart, and he knew that Xiang Shu would be able to get it done. If the black armored general Sima Yu could be brought back, it would certainly be helpful in finding Shi Hai and Chu's hiding place. Defend the city first. Xiang Shu said, avoid going to the battle outside the city walls. I'll find a way to keep an eye on Xiao Shan and won't let him make trouble out there. Inside the living corpse army, the first wave was the infantry, and the next wave was the cavalry. The surging snow fog obscured their field of vision, making them unable to see the commander-in-chief clearly, the enemy leader obviously had no intention to go out. All these bodies, where do they come from? Chen Xing murmured. Within a radius of a thousand li, replied the tile chief, they must have turned over every single burial ground. The custom of sky burial still continued among the Hus, and only those who made grave mistakes, prisoners of war, and slaves were not allowed to be buried this way. For decades, there were many random burial pits all around the mountains, most of which using stones. The enemy unexpectedly used local materials, and found and awakened so many living corpses. Claws. Claws. Xiao Shan repeatedly climbed on Chen Xing, trying to retrieve his confiscated weapon. Not now. Chen Xing said, when going into battle, we will go together. Xiao Shan had to give up and stand at the top of the city walls, watching the battle with Xiang Shu and Chen Xing. There were many archers on the city walls. All the Hus outside the Great Wall were born amazing sharpshooters, 
they ignited fiery arrows one after another. Led by various clan chiefs, they stood at the height of the city walls, forming an indestructible line of defense. Over the past few days, Xiang Shu had been meeting up with the clan chiefs, telling them the story behind the drought fiend's upheaval. After knowing where the monsters came from and what they actually were, the Hus were no longer afraid. At most, they fought harder and took more precautions. At the moment, everyone's expression was serious, and there was a strange silence inside and outside the city. Only the rustling sound of living corpses moving through the snow could be heard. The snow fog was covering everything, and once the corpses got close to their perimeter, Xiang Shu shouted, Shoot! In an instant, fiery arrows flew all over the sky and shot towards the snow outside the city. Chen Xing looked at the scene, the enemy couldn't come close to the city walls at all. No matter how hard the living corpses struggled, their movements were still slow, and most of them were merely rotting corpses dug up from the ground. The intense cold made it possible for their flesh and blood as well as their limbs to be attached together. Once the ice melted, the link would fail and they would scatter all over the ground and were no longer a problem. However, Chen Xin kept sensing a danger lurking inside the swirling snow fog. Sure enough, coming from inside the fog, two dong, dong sounds were heard. Although it wasn't loud, it was clearly transmitted to everyone's eardrums. Magical Artifact Chen Xin made a quick conclusion and shouted, Get ready! Xiang Shu it sounded as if a person was shaking a rattle drum next to his ears. Suddenly, approximately ten huge monsters rushed out of the fog. The monsters were so tall and covered with rotten hair. They trampled directly through the group of living corpses and rushed towards the outer wall of Longcheng. The Hu archers shouted loudly, but Chen Xin couldn't understand what they meant. He also had never seen those monsters before. What is that? Chen Xin yelled. Xiao Shan also followed and yelled, Xiang Shu immediately said, Elephants. Chen Xin only read about elephants in books. Unexpectedly, elephants' carcasses were found in this cold northern area. The elephants were covered with ice and snow, it seemed that after being dead for thousands of years, their internal organs and limbs were frozen stiff, and they became natural battering rams. When the first elephant hit the city wall, the earth shook, and tiles and bricks flew in all directions. After Xiang Shu had steadied himself, he reached for Chen Xing then jumped down from the top of the city walls. The archers fell to the ground in succession, and the brazier toppled inward. The elephants quickly flattened the anti-cavalry barriers, crashing through the wooden outer walls before hitting Karakoram's city walls. Chaos reigned in the city tower. The elephants soon retreated one after another but they weren't afraid of arrows at all. With the sound of the rattle drum, they began to organize a second charge. We can't stop this. The tile chief rushed down from the top of the tower and yelled, Another hit, and the walls will fall apart. Great Chan Yu. Xiang Shu shouted, Four hundred people, follow me out. Chen Xing. The elephants must be stopped, or these thousands of Jin monsters would slam into them and in less than an hour, they would break through the city wall and flatten the whole Karakoram. I'm going to cleanse that magical artifact. Chen Xing shouted. No. It's too dangerous. Xiang Shu said, prepare net traps and caltrops. It's useless. Chen Xing shouted, these elephants are already dead. They're not afraid of pain. Shi Mokin. You keep an eye on Xiao Shan. When the city gate opened, Xiang Shu rushed out of Karakoram together with the Teals and the Zionless cavalry. Under the dark sky, the cavalry threw out net traps one after another. As soon as an elephant stepped on it, a team of five would immediately close the net, the rotting giant elephant then stumbled, making the ground shake as it fell into the snow. With the heart lamp shining brightly in his hands, Chen Xing urged his horse forward and rushed into the battle. Xiang Shu chased after him and shouted, Wait for me. Chen Xin turned his head. When he heard those dong, dong sounds, he soon deducted why the other party had nothing to fear. 
It was because of this ancient magical artifact, which was made from the skin of an immortal beast named Zheng. Legend said it was able to suppress the souls of the deceased, making them cower in fear with its roar. It must be similar to the yin-yang mirror. The other party must have used resentment to activate this magical artifact and changed its original function. The magical artifact originally used spiritual qi to exorcise evil spirits, but once it was refined by resentment, it became a demonic weapon able to control the living corpses. We must get it back as soon as possible. As long as we seize this magical artifact, the other side's advance will be easily solved. Time to fight, Che Lufeng said slowly. A tall, big man and Che Lufeng stood quietly in the rear, each riding a corpse horse. Behind them was Sima Yu in black armor. Sima Yu was holding a strange antler magical staff in his hand, emitting a jet black resentment. Zhou Zhen. Che Lufeng turned his head and looked at the man beside him. This man had been dead for some years, but his appearance was still very good, and he looked exactly like when he was just buried. He wore Xiang Shu's great Chanyu's crown, its three feathers stuck out on the side of his head. His whole body was covered in a wolf fur long robe, his left hand was wearing a knuckles ring, and in his right hand, he was holding a small rattle drum. It was precisely the Ruren's greatest warrior, Zhou Zhen. Zhou Zhen indifferently said, I'll deal with Shulu Kong. Leave that Han to me, Che Lufeng said. Zhou Zhen nodded, glanced at Che Lufeng, and casually said, If they're too far away from each other, the heart lamp won't work. Che Lufeng looked at his people, 60,000 Rurans who had become members of the stiff-faced living corpse army were riding on their horses and waiting for his orders. I, in the end, Che Lufeng didn't know whether this was the right decision or not. Zhou Zhen replied, Rest assured, my lord has ordered us not to kill Shulu Kong. He is still of great use to us. Che Lufeng took a deep breath. Under the city walls in the distance, the giant elephants have fallen one after another. Zhou Zhen shook his rattle drum again, and it made three dong, dong, dong sounds. In an orderly manner, the Rurans took up their weapons and launched the second siege attack. In an instant, the giant elephants and the corpses from the first siege, which had piled up under the city walls, became the best siege ladders. The Ruran cavalry rode across the wasteland and directly rushed to Karakoram's walls. Xiang Shu suddenly looked back and saw a flood of enemy troops rushing in. Chen Xing shouted, Xiang Shu. Xiang Shu urged the horse to catch up with Chen Xing, but the two men were separated by the storming army in no time. Chen Xing had the heart lamp in his hands, and the attacking cavalry scattered and avoided him, but Xiang Shu wasn't protected, so he had to swing his big sword and rush over to rendezvous with Chen Xing. Wherever the army marched, there was always snow trail following behind them, to the point it was hard to recognize allies and foes. With the heart lamp illuminated in his hands, Chen Xin galloped as he searched for Xiang Shu, but then, amidst the snow fog, a figure emerged Che Lufeng. Chen Xin immediately became furious and urged his horse into the snow fog. Che Lufeng showed a strange smile, his whole body had been corrupted by the devil god's blood, and he had the ash-gray color of the corpse. Little Han Dog, Che Lufeng smiled, you finally came out. Chen Xing held a bow in his hand and said in a deep voice, Che Lufeng. Why are you doing this? Xiang Shu has never treated you badly. You still can't let go of your hatred against the Akeles even now. Che Lufeng gave a sinister laugh. He tilted his head sideways and looked at Chen Xing carefully before replying, I could have let it go since my good brother Zhou Zhen has come back to life. Blame it on that Akele consort for meddling in other people's business. She tried to find her eldest son and found Zhou Zhen hiding inside my tent. Zhou Zhen. Chen Xing's brow twisted. Remember our agreement. Che Lufeng also took out his longbow and said, You shoot me with an arrow, and I'll shoot you with an arrow. Let's play. Chen Xing. Where is Zhou Zhen? Chen Xing said in a low voice. What's your relationship with Shi Hai? Shi Hai. Che Lufeng thought for a moment and failed to understand. 
He instead replied, Come B.A., if you can come close within three Zhang, I'll answer your question. Then, Che Lufeng turned his horse and rushed into the blizzard. Chen Xing angrily said, Don't underestimate me. Chen Xing immediately urged the horse with both legs and galloped after him. The cavalry around Xiangshu was suddenly cleared up. From inside the snow fog, came Dong, Dong sounds, and a figure appeared. Zhou Zhen. Xiang Xu couldn't believe what he saw. Zhou Zhen, dressed in wolf fur that exposed a big round scar at the location of his heart, walked slowly towards him. Shulu Kong, Zhou Zhen said, long time no see. The exorcist isn't by your side and now, you don't have the power of the heart lamp. Come back with me, my lord is waiting for you. Xiang Xu held his broadsword as he looked straight at Zhou Zhen from a distance. Were you resurrected too? Xiang Xu said, You're already dead, why haven't you made peace with things and returned to the earth? Zhou Zhen smiled, it looked incomparably strange on the living corpse's face. It should be said that I never really died. Zhou Zhen said, Originally, Shi Hai Daren had wanted to give the former great Chan Yu, Shulu Wen, an immortal life, but you had personally sent him off, Shulu Kong. Shut up! Xiang Shu flew into a rage, it's you. You make it impossible for the dead to rest in peace. Zhou Zhen raised his hand and spun his rattle drum. The Ruren cavalry emerged from the snow fog again, encircling Xiang Shu. Xiang Shu sneered. Greatest warrior of the Rurans, your so-called greatest title was only called out among the Rurans. Do you really think that just because the exorcist isn't here, the great Chanyu would be afraid of you? Zhou Zhen said in a deep voice, the great Chanyu's martial arts is unrivaled, it's natural not to be afraid. I just don't know that against my clan who aren't afraid of death and pain, fighting until the last breath, what are your odds of success? Meanwhile, Chen Xin chased Che Lufeng all the way. It was as if Che Lufeng intended to make fun of him, he kept dragging and circling around inside the snow fog. Chen Xin drew his bow and knocked an arrow several times, but he couldn't aim at the high-speed Che Lufeng. Idiot! Che Lufeng laughed wildly. When they finally reached a forest, Chen Xin suddenly remembered, since it's like this, it's time to rely on I Upiter. He immediately stopped looking for Che Lufeng, drew his longbow, and closed his eyes. An arrow was knocked. Right at this moment, Che Lufeng bumped his horse into Chen Xing, and as soon as the two horses collided, Chen Xing was immediately knocked flying. The fingers on the string loosened up, and the arrow was shot into the sky. Chen Xing was ruthlessly slammed into the ground. He grabbed his bow and got up in horror. In front of him, Che Lufeng drew his longbow and aimed at Chen Xing's head. He smiled and said, Enough fun, it's my turn now. What about Chen Xing? At the same time, he glanced up, hoping that a sudden burst of gust would blow the arrow back and pierce it through Che Lufeng's skull. However, there was nothing. The arrow had already flown to who knows where. Inside the dense snow fog, Xiang Shu clenched his broadsword tightly and stared at Zhou Zhen. Zhou Zhen smiled as he fiddled with the rattle drum. He spun it gently, and quickly, from all corners, thousands of Ruren cavalry tried to slam into Xiang Shu, squeezing and dragging him off his horse. Exactly at this moment, that arrow which had been blown out of its trajectory came flying from the sky towards Zhou Zhen and with a paw, it hit him in his wrist. The rattle drum sounded a dong as it flew out of his hand and spun in the air. Zhou Zhen, who was caught off guard, only felt that his hand was suddenly empty, and he immediately turned his head. Zhou Zhen Xiang Shu immediately raised his broadsword and shouted loudly as he rushed up trying to snatch the magical artifact. Behind Zhou Zhen, a figure suddenly appeared. Flying midair, it raised its hand and caught the rattle drum. When Zhou Zhen was about to reach out his hand, he was hit ruthlessly with a back scratcher, fracturing his finger. Xiao Shan suddenly appeared from inside the snow fog. Xiang Shu was about to come forward, but he was quickly surrounded by the Ruren cavalry, so he just roared, Xiao Shan. 
take the magical artifact and go. Xiao Shan looked at the rattle drum in his hand. Zhou Zhen immediately turned around to catch Xiao Shan, but Xiao Shan had already run away. The Ruren cavalry frantically besieged Xiang Shu, but Xiang Shu didn't want to keep fighting. His sword swept away several men in front of him, and he turned to look for Chen Xing. Chen Xing waited for a long time, but the arrow didn't fly back. He sat on the ground and slowly backed away. Che Lufeng's bow and arrow missed its mark by a tiny margin. Yi! Look who's here! Chen Xing was quick-witted and pointed behind Che Lufeng. Che Lufeng was almost deceived by Chen Xing. Subconsciously, when he was about to turn his head, he sneered. Do you really think I'm so? At this moment, from behind him, a living corpse rushed out of the forest and with a roar, it slammed into Che Lufeng and clung on him. Yuduo! Chen Xing shouted at once. That living corpse was precisely Yuduo, he bit Che Lufeng on the shoulder right away. Che Lufeng shouted and struggled with all his might, throwing Yuduo into the snow. Chen Xing shouted, I've told you. It was you who didn't want to look. He hurriedly got up and escaped, leaving the two men to fight in the snow. He ran a few steps, looked around, then shouted, Xiang Shu. Xiang Shu, where are you? Xiang Shu didn't respond, but Xiao Shan rushed out of the snowy battlefield. He had a rattle drum in his left hand and a back scratcher in his right hand, shouting at Chen Xing, Claws. Claws. Great. We got it. This is excellent. Chen Xing didn't have time to ask Xiao Shan when did he rush out nor ask why the magical artifact was in his hands. He shouted, Quick, give it to me. Give it to me. Xiao Shan said, Claws. The claws are at home. Chen Xing pointed to the direction of the city and said, I didn't bring them, we'll get them later when we return. Xiao Shan. Xiao Shan understood that, and Chen Xing anxiously shouted, Give me the magical artifact first ah. Xiao Shan threw out the back scratcher. Chen Xing immediately said, Wrong. Give me that dong dong dong. Che Lufeng was finally able to break free from Yu Duo's bind. He pulled out his sword and rushed towards Chen Xing. Xiao Shan had to throw the rattle drum to Chen Xing as he moved forward to stop Che Lufeng with his bare hands, protecting Chen Xing. As soon as Chen Xing got the rattle drum, he could sense that this magical artifact indeed had been refined by resentment, so he immediately took a breath and focused himself before shaking it. With a dong sound, a small change seemed to be happening within the snow fog. The resentment spread through the wooden handle of the rattle drum, and then to Chen Xing's arm. Suddenly, heavy resentment rose up from all directions. Chen Xing protected his heart using the heart lamp. Standing on the snow, he began to activate the ancient magical artifact, starting to spin it again and again. And then, with Chen Xing in its center, the resentment spread out just like ripples, one circle after another, covering the entire battlefield. End chapter Dingai Fusion Records Chapter 42 Captive The resentment was visibly gathering and rising, it looked similar to a whirlwind soaring into the sky. Chen Xing was shrouded by the bleak and intense gale, and he was trying his best to control the rattle drum. The resentment first put up a pretense of an intense struggle before it transformed into a huge ancient mythical beast Zheng. Five tails, one horn, and shaped like a scarlet panther Zheng's resentful spirit was constantly struggling inside the whirlwind, making a roar that sounded as if a boulder had crashed into something, a sound which traveled for a hundred li. At the moment when Zheng appeared, the living corpses stopped attacking the city. They all turned away from the battlefield and focused on Chen Xing. Get it back! Zhou Zhen shouted desperately. Unaffected by the rattle drum, the Ruren cavalry turned around one after another from the city and towards the battlefield. Karakorum, which had been nearly captured, was suddenly under less pressure. 
The tribes weakened the enemies before coming out to support the great Chan Yu, Xiang Shu. This resentment is too strong. It's even harder to control than the Yin Yang Mirror. Even though Chen Xing had familiarized himself with all kinds of magic powers since he was a child, it was still extremely difficult to deal with this level of powerful magical artifacts. Not to mention that the resentment wrapped around the rattle drum was also constantly looking for ways to break into his heart, wanting to swallow and become one with him. I can't hold on any longer. The surrounding living corpses were gradually showing signs of getting out of control. Chen Xin tried his best to shake the rattle drum. With a dong sound, hundreds of thousands of living corpses followed the command of the rattle drum in Chen Xin's hand and changed directions. Xiang Shu urged his horse, swinging his sword as he rushed towards Che Lufeng. Shu Lukong. Che Lufeng was gasping for breath. Xiang Shu held his broadsword in one hand, standing in front of Chen Xin and blocking Che Lufeng. Che Lufeng. Xiang Shu suddenly shouted, Explain all this to me. Xiang Shu. Xiang Shu. Chen Xing's heart suffered a heavy blow after activating the magical artifact. He gasped constantly and was already a little unsteady. Putting one hand on his chest, he kept swaying from side to side and was about to fall into the snow. Che Lufeng sneered, stooping over a bit as he watched Xiang Shu's every move. In front of him was Che Lufeng and behind him was Chen Xing who was on the verge of collapse. Xiang Shu was absent-minded for a split second. It wasn't the time to bother with Che Lufeng, he should take care of Chen Xing. Or else, when the Ruran cavalry returned, both of them would certainly be sandwiched between them. Once they charged in, even if Xiang Shu had heavenly skills, he wouldn't be able to guarantee Chen Xing's safety. Can you hold on? Xiang Shu's eyes were all focused on Che Lufeng's movements. To carry Chen Xing and take care of Che Lufeng simultaneously was truly difficult. I'm fine, Chen Xing was really having trouble breathing and could nearly not keep his hold on the rattle drum, you go, they'll come back soon, just leave me. Quick. Go. From afar, the Ruran cavalry returned and quickly gathered around them. Che Lufeng's face was full of bitterness. Just as he was about to attack him, Xiang Shu finally made his choice. He actually abandoned Che Lufeng and coldly said, Xiao Shan. Go. Then he took Chen Xing onto his horse, turned around, and broke through the encirclement. Xiao Shan grabbed a horse, got on it, then chased after Xiang Shu. This action immediately stunned Che Lufeng. His face showed a completely lost expression, staring blankly as he watched Xiang Shu leave. Xiang Shu placed Chen Xing onto the horse before quickly changing the horse's direction. Nearly 200,000 living corpses suddenly changed their targets and advanced towards the Ruran cavalry. The army of living corpses was followed by Chen Xing and Xiang Shu. The two men were then followed by the Tile, Xiang Nu, and other cavalry members. Zhou Zhen didn't expect that the living corpses would suddenly attack them instead. He thought that after the silence of all magic, no one would be able to activate any magical artifacts anymore. In a panic, he hastily gave out an order, but it was too late because the Ruran cavalry in front of him had already been crushed. The living corpses swarmed and trampled on them, the whole army was suddenly in chaos. Zhou Zhen shouted, How can you activate the magical artifact refined by the blood of my lord? I am the great exorcist, Chen Xing said in a cold voice. Xiang Shu had ridden his horse to the center of the Ruran army. In front of him, the heavy sword swept away five or six cavalrymen blocking his way. Chen Xing held Xiang Shu's waist, repeatedly gasping for breath. His heart faintly ached because the power he had used to activate the rattle drum had caused the heart lamp to become constantly eroded by resentment. Give me the power of heart lamp! Xiang Shu shouted. Chen Xing tightly hugged Xiang Shu's waist. He leaned on his back, closed his eyes, and immediately increased the heart lamp's strength. Xiang Shu shook his broadsword, wanting to turn it into a longbow, but unexpectedly, the broadsword shone and changed shape again this time becoming a six-chi pole. Xiang Shu was stunned at first, 
but soon, he wielded that pole as if he was wielding a long halberd. He swung it repeatedly from left to right, making it so that people could only see some light wheel clearing the army, and all the cavalrymen blocking the way were cleared away from the horse. Zhou Zhen was immediately frightened and instinctively sensed that this divine weapon was the bane of his existence. He dared not fight any more, he turned his horse and quickly retreated, but Xiang Shu, wielding immense power, rapidly closing in. Then, when the pole was thrust, the heart lamp's pure light visibly released a raging fire. Zhou Zhen's back robe was in the blast radius, and it began to burn. At the last minute, just when the fire was about to completely hit Zhou Zhen and his horse, there was suddenly a hum sound before they all faded away. Chen Xing fell on Xiang Shu's back. His grip unconsciously loosened, and the back of Xiang Shu's leather armor was soaked by a mouthful of blood. Xiang Shu, Chen Xing. Bastard. Che Lufeng came back and shouted, Shulu Kong. He ferociously bumped against the side of Xiang Shu's horse. Che Lufeng was dressed in heavy armor and thought Xiang Shu would fight him, but unexpectedly, the person he cared about the most didn't even look at him. The resentment in his heart had reached its limit, and at once, heedless of life and death, he slammed his horse with Xiang Shu's, clutching at the idea of taking Xiang Shu down with him. Chen Xing had already fainted, and half of his body was hanging down off the horse. Being bumped by Che Lufeng, Xiang Shu immediately reached out to grab Chen Xing, but he was a step behind in the end. Reinforcements poured in, and since they were situated at the front of the two armies, Xiang Shu and Chen Xing were both knocked down. Zhou Zhen just wanted to take the rattle drum, and he shouted, Che Lufeng. The artifact. Like a tide, the two armies collided with each other. Chen Xing's consciousness gradually disappeared, and there was only darkness before his eyes. Am I dying? It's too soon. It's not time yet. Chen Xing was about to completely lose consciousness, but he was still clenching the rattle drum in his hand and instinctively refused to let go. Right at the moment his consciousness blurred, he seemed to see an extremely strange sight. It was a world seen from another person's eyes. The room was distorted all around, and the walls were covered in blood vessels. However, it only took a short time before the owner of those eyes found him. In an instant, it was as if he had looked straight into his heart, and somehow, their consciousness seemed to be connected to each other. The heart lamp's host. A hoarse voice said, unexpectedly, you're able to come here through my blood. Well. Currently, in the entire Divine Land, you and I are the only ones who have magical power. Wake up! A strange teenager's voice said inside Chen Xing's consciousness. It's not yet time to give up. Chen Xing suddenly opened his eyes, and countless scenes loudly shattered. That sound seemed to expel his consciousness from thousands of miles away. The scene in front of him was sometimes blurred and sometimes clear. A cold wind was blowing, and few snowflakes fell on his face. A hand covered in an ice-cold iron glove pinched his chin, slightly lifting up his head. What's this place? The moment Chen Xing regained consciousness, he knew he was being held captive. The surroundings were all shrouded by clouds and mist, and the clouds revealed a part of a mountain ridge, Yin Mountain's summit, Hohbashi Mountain's highest peak. On a small clearing stood two black armored shadow generals, as well as Che Lufeng who was sitting on the ground, disheveled and gasping for breath. Zhou Zhen stood on one side, fixing his eyes at the rattle drum on the stone. Chen Xing moved his wrist only to find himself tied up by an ice-cold iron chain. It was freezing to the point that even a drop of water would turn into ice, and there was a layer of frost on the iron chain. He thought to himself. You guys go this far just for me? Tie me up with such a heavy chain? Even if I wasn't tied up, I still couldn't get away B.A. As soon as Chen Xing woke up, Che Lufeng and Zhou Zhen guardedly looked at him. Among the two black armored generals, one of them tried to lift Chen Xing up, but the other stopped him. Chen Xing vaguely recognized the armor and recognized that the person who had wanted to lift him up should be Sima Yu. As for the other one, 
he didn't know who that was. The armor that these black armored generals used was almost exactly the same, and they all wore helmets that covered their whole face, making it impossible to tell them apart. Sima Yu turned around and walked towards Zhou Zhen. Now what? A hoarse voice came from inside the armor. This guy can talk. Chen Xing was startled when he heard the sound. At first, when he regarded this group of people, he had just done it casually and thought they were the same as other living corpses driven by pure instinct. Turned out though, it seemed that they were more advanced than the usual living corpses. Being able to talk proved that they have their own will. Sima Lun, who he had met back in Chang'an, might have just been reluctant to speak. Zhou Zhen didn't answer and only looked at Che Lufeng. Che Lufeng then looked at Chen Xing with a gaze full of hatred. I handed over the drought fiend army that Shi Hai Daren had built in this place into your hands, Sima Yu said in a hoarse voice that sounded like weapons rasping together, because you told me that you still had the 60,000 Rurin cavalry. How about now? There was another black armored general standing next to Chen Xing, but he never said a word. Chen Xing shot him a quick glance. For some reason, he felt that the general seemed a bit familiar. He kept feeling as though he had seen this kind of armor somewhere before. Nat, I've only seen three so far, Sima Lun who is already dead, Sima Yu, and the one in Long Zhong Mountain. Sima Wei. This man was the Jin Dynasty's Chu Prince, Sima Wei. And was also the first black armored general that Chen Xing had seen. That night, he had looked at him in a hurry and wasn't able to see his face clearly, but sure enough, this guy had also appeared. It was clear that Zhou Zhen had lost a bit of his confidence. He answered, We've stationed the Ruren's invincible army in the Yin Mountains. Sholokong will certainly come to save this boy. At that time, we'll be hidden while they'll be out in the open. You always theorize with no real practice, the black armored general Sima Yu mocked. You think you're one step ahead of your enemies, but in the end, you're still caught off guard. I didn't expect this kid could use the Zhang drum, Zhou Zhen moved towards Chen Xing, but the two black armored generals stood in front of Chen Xing and kept him away. Sima Yu replied, Zhou Zhen, an army of 200,000 drought fiends is already in your hands. Can you and your companion capture Sholokong alive, or not? Chen Xing looked from between the two generals' leg armor and saw Che Lufeng's ferocious and angry eyes. Che Lufeng suddenly said, I have an idea. We can kill this boy, said Che Lufeng in a low voice. If we hang his corpse in this place, when Shola Kong sees it, he will be a mess. Take advantage of that. Fool. Sima Yu said coldly, I feel like you're the one who should be killed. Sima Yu drew a sword and Zhou Zhen immediately stood in front of Che Lufeng, saying in a deep voice, General. In fighting, in fighting. Although he didn't know the exact details, Chen Xin could roughly speculate a thing or two, these people were most likely sent by Shi Hai. Only, he didn't know whether the so-called My Lord was referring to Chu or to Shi Hai it didn't matter anyway. Maybe. Shi Hai had made enough arrangements in the north over the years and had resurrected 200,000 living corpses before handing them over to Sima Yu. And now, Zhou Zhen had taken over the command of the army. With an addition of 60,000 Ruren cavalry, he wanted to make an effort to capture Long Cheng. But at the last minute, Chen Xing had gotten the rattle drum and turned the tide of war. Currently, the drought fiend army had been exhausted and the two black-armored generals had become very dissatisfied. Keep fighting ah! You continue to fight among yourselves. Don't stop. Chen Xin was full of expectations. Sima Yu said in a deep voice, Step aside. Drought Fiend King, Zhou Zhen also said coldly, This is Shi Hai Daren's order. Shi Hai didn't order you to entangle yourself with the Rurans again. Sima Yu said, in this life and the afterlife, you've already belonged to our Lord. You must forget your past identity. If you keep persisting about the mortal behind you, Ben Wang won't mind dealing with him for you. Zhou Zhen exhaled deeply. Sima Yu put down his sword, 
summoned a flock of crows, jumped off the cliff, and disappeared. Zhou Zhen glanced at Che Lufeng, whose face was showing an extremely complicated expression, then said, I'll set up an ambush for Shola Kong. Capture him alive or what? Che Lufeng was silent for a long time and finally said, If you can't capture him alive, just kill him and bring his body back. It's all the same. As it should have been a long time ago, Zhou Zhen said. Things wouldn't have progressed this far if it hadn't been for your plea. I was wrong. Che Lufeng said, I was wrong, all right. Zhou Zhen turned around, also jumped off the cliff, and disappeared. The top of the mountain quieted down again, leaving Sai Mawei, Chen Xing, and Che Lufeng. Che Lufeng sat down, minding his own business. He bowed his head and applied resin to his bow's bowstring. Chen Xing knew that currently, Xiang Shu must have tried his best to come up with a method to save him, and it was possible that he had already led an army to heavily surround the mountain. However, while the 16 Hu cavalry might be experts in fighting on the plains and weren't afraid of any assault, the same couldn't be said about fighting in the mountains. This platform on the top of the mountain, which covered an area of no more than 10 Zhang, was covered in thin snow, and there were also several stone pillars jutting out all around the area. Chen Xing didn't know which group of people had offered sacrifices to heaven here. Chen Xing moved the iron chain and made a noise, thinking about how to find a way to escape. Standing on the side, Sai Mawei turned his head slightly and looked at Chen Xing. Why isn't this guy talking? Chen Xing thought that maybe, by listening to him, he could find out some information regarding this Shi Has group. What about the scene I saw when I was in a coma? Who was that teenager whose voice spoke to me in the dream? Chen Xing dragged the chain and moved about, making a small sound. Che Lufeng stopped his actions and looked at him. Chen Xing stopped moving. Che Lufeng looked at Chen Xing and said in a cold voice, Do you know how the Rurans tortured prisoners of war? Chen Xing replied, I don't know. But these days, I've seen how the Rurans torture their own people. This sentence immediately stabbed Che Lufeng's sore spot, and his face changed. He said coldly, Han Dog, what do you know? You're all bastards. Suddenly, from the side, the silent Sai Mawei turned and drew his sword. Che Lufeng at this time actually forgot that the corpse was a member of the Jin royal family before he had died, he instinctively got up and wanted to retreat. Sai Mawei moved his sword, and Che Lufeng hurriedly parried it, but the sword was as fast as lightning, and it was immediately put to Che Lufeng's neck. Chen Xing, who was forgotten, watched the hustle and bustle. When he saw such a maneuver, he couldn't help but applaud in his heart. He didn't know martial arts, but after staying with Xiang Shu for a long time, he could roughly see that this kind of not letting the opponent dodge and blocking their exit move had an extremely high difficulty. Che Lufeng dared not say anything more. Sai Mawei withdrew his sword as if nothing had happened. Chen Xing glanced at Sai Mawei, and thus, he was no longer afraid of Che Lufeng. All of you have drunk the devil god's blood ma. Chen Xing thought for a moment and said, How did Zhou Zhen sway you? Did he say that if you drank his potion, you would be able to lead your people to eternal life? Chen Xing observed Che Lufeng and saw that his complexion wasn't quite right anymore. When it came to those Rurin cavalries, most of them had this blue, gloomy complexion. It was a little different from the blue, ashen looks of Zhou Zhen, a man who had been dead for a long time. Che Lufeng's body was slowly changing, Chen Xing just didn't know whether he still felt pain or not. Eternal life. Che Lufeng smiled in disdain. I just wanted to avenge Zhou Zhen. Now that Zhou Zhen is alive, what do you think is the most important thing to me any? Han, it's you. Your death is near. Zhou Zhen was tall and had good facial features, a mix of both his Han and Ruren's parentage. Judging only by his post-mortem appearance, he had probably been a majestic and beautiful man, which was quite different from Xiang Shu. Chen Xing knew that when Zhou Zhen was still alive, he was Che Lufeng's lover. However, 
he had always felt that Che Lufeng still seemed to like Xiang Shu. He didn't know whether Che Lufeng first fell in love with Zhou Zhen and shifted his affection to Xiang Shu after he had died, or if he had first fallen in love with Xiang Shu, got rejected, then got together with Zhou Zhen. Or maybe Che Lufeng had always liked both of them all along. I'm just curious about something, Chen Xin probed, Che Lufeng, you still like Xiang Shu? Since Zhou Zhen is already dead, can he still become hard? Chen Xin had just wanted to ramble about Che Lufeng's matters. He didn't expect Che Lufeng to shout, stand, and even want to beat Chen Xin up, but Sima Wei turned around a little bit to keep Che Lufeng away. Che Lufeng glared angrily at him. Chen Xin didn't know if it was the potion that had made him extremely irritable. Fine fine fine, Chen Xin hurriedly said, I won't talk about it. Chen Xin always felt that it was going against heaven's will to resurrect a dead person in this way. If the drought fiends could be called a race, then the drought fiends would be the most peculiar race. They shouldn't be able to reproduce on their own, unlike other species of Yao's. How long has Zhou Zhen been revived? Chen Xin asked again, when did you meet him? Che Lufeng didn't answer, Chen Xin asked sincerely, let's play a game? I'll answer your question, and in turn, how about you lick my chain? Chen Xin only wanted to play a trick on him. The chain was so frozen that right after licking it, his tongue would be glued to it just enough to deal with his opponent. Che Lufeng, of course, wouldn't be fooled. He mocked, are you crazy? You think I'm a three-year-old? Then you ask me a question, and I'll answer one of yours, Chen Xing suggested. Che Lufeng finally said, you're an exorcist, right? You're here for the drought fiends. I really thought you were a doctor. You're going to die soon, you know? When they take you back to Huanmo Palace, you will be made into a sacrifice. You're going to die soon, so why do you have so many questions? Chen Xing unexpectedly got his first piece of crucial information, Huanmo Palace. He casually replied, if I were to gain knowledge of the truth in the morning, I would be able to die with no regrets in the evening. Even if I am about to die, I still want to satisfy my curiosity, okay? Che Lufeng then put down his bow and side-eyed Chen Xing. He then looked at him properly, raised his eyebrows, and said, Ask B.A., little bastard. When Chen Xing first saw Che Lufeng, he thought he was very good looking, with thick eyebrows and big eyes, but unfortunately, there was a touch of evil in his facial features, truly a pity. Where did you get your weapon? Chen Xing was afraid that Shi Hai had given the man other magical artifact like that rattle drum. If that was the case, he was afraid that Xiang Shu wouldn't be able to deal with them when he came to save him later. It was the token given to me by Sholokong when he made me his anda, Che Lufeng replied coldly, I will use this bow to kill you in front of him later. It's your turn, answer me, what on earth is your relationship with Sholokong? End chapter